I have this crime scene behind me. I've taken my photographs. Now I need to sketch. I need to be able to document where the items that I've taken or that I've processed, where they were in the room. And we're going to do that through triangulation. Now I'm going to show you an easy method, um, a cost-effective method. Now you can buy equipment that will do all of this for you, uh, but you're not going to use that equipment every single crime scene. So this is an easy way, a fast and accurate way to be able to document your crime scene or your evidence in your crime scene so you know exactly where it was. So if you needed to reconstruct this crime scene later, you'd have all of the information that you need. And then you're going to make a beautiful little sketch like that. Let's check it out. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure our room. So here is our room. We are going to, we've already labeled, I'm going to change that. We've already labeled our corners when we did our photography. Okay, we already labeled our corners when we did our photography. Then we need to put the door in. The door goes in the way it opens. So if it's this way and it opens in, it's going to look like this. If the door opened outwards, oops, it's going to look like that. Okay, so we have an inward opening door. So we're going to leave it like that. Now you can also make measurements and put in. So here's a bed. Um, now we have. I'm going to show you how to do the sketch first here. on the, the whiteboard. Room in the other room actually bumps out, but we're going to keep it simple for demonstration. We're first going to let measure the lengths of our room. Now in the other room, this is 17 feet. And the width is 13 feet. So we're going to put that in. 13, measure 13. Now I like to use uh, feet for the uh, to do the area of the room. And then once we're measuring our evidence, we're going to use um, inches. So now I have a couple of uh, items in there. I have three different items, okay? Three different pieces of evidence. Now the first thing I'm going to do is measure, this is gonna say, we'll say this is exhibit one. I'm going to measure from A to that object. And whatever that number is, let's say it's uh, 120. Then I'm going to measure from D to my object. And we'll say that's uh, 95, okay? We're measuring it off. Now, uh, we're going to do that with each of our items. So we're going to measure from C, we'll say this is number two. We're gonna measure C to two, we're gonna measure D to two, we're gonna measure B to number three, A to number three, and we're going to write our numbers right in here. So we'll say 75 inches, and this was uh, 130 inches. We're gonna measure it right in there on our sketch. Now remember, it doesn't need to be neat, it needs to be accurate. Since I only have one whiteboard, I wasn't able to do this while I was measuring. But let's say that exhibit one was a gun. We're going to want to make sure we have the key. And then we're going to write down what we had. So we had A to the gun was 120. And then D to the gun, I believe it was 95. And then we're going to do the same for exhibit two. It was, uh, let's say it was a, um, a hammer. And then we're going to measure from those corners, whatever those uh, corners were. So let's say it was D, and then you'd write the number. And then I believe we measured from C, and you'd write the number. This is going to be your key. OK, so here's my crime scene. Now, I have already labeled the walls. You can see I have my A. I'm going across the wall. Down, that one is D. Over in the corner is C, and then finally I have B. My little sticker fell down, uh, but B is over here. Now I have my pieces of evidence. I have three pieces of evidence. Okay, one, two, three. I also have the bed. You could measure the, the desks, where the desks are. You could measure the furniture. You can see that there's a bump out here. So I'm measuring D until evidence number three. So I'm going to put my tape measure all the way down into the corner. And then I am going to measure unto the center 
of the object. So that's at 95. So that's going to be D, 95. And now I'm going to measure from A. If you can get on the floor and measure like this, this is going to be best. But I can't do that. Sometimes that is not always an option. And so you'll need to create, oops, sorry. You'll need to create a plumb bob. Um, I forgot my plumb bob because I don't have my bullet trajectory kit. So I just have a string and I put a water bottle on the end. And what you're going to do is you're going to measure from the corner, just like we did. Now you'd have a second person holding, and I want that right over the top of my object so that I know that it's 90 degrees, and then I can make my measurement. Okay, now I have my measurement from D. I have my measurement from A. Okay, look, I measured from D and from A. There they are. I have my measurements. And then on the top, I have right here, exhibit A, or sorry, it says number three, exhibit three, D, and A. Okay, that's right here. I'm going to keep measuring here. So I'm going to measure here. And from my C, 58. Measure to my... And that, my friends, is how you do triangulation. Now, there are a couple of things I got to remind you that are very important. When you're making your sketch, when you're making your sketch, again, we're going to put in the measurements in there and then make sure that you have a key so that you know what you're measuring. You don't have to draw what the evidence is. So this one's a gun. You're not drawing a gun. Just put a, a, a exhibit one or this one exhibit three and then that it's a gun. You don't have to draw the gun. Number two, when you're making your key, you want to make sure you have the date. You want to make sure you have who is doing the measuring and who's doing the sketching because this is a two-man job. I'm doing it alone by myself to show you, but I would be measuring and then calling off to someone else who's doing the sketches. It even works better with three. You have one to hold the end of the uh, tape measure in the corner, the other one calling out the number at the object, and someone else sketching. So it works really well with three people. And remember, this is in concert with your photographs. This is in concert with your photographs. So the question that I get a lot is, where do you measure on your item? I always measure to the middle of the item. Unless you're trying to lock that item in, you're going to use your photographs to supplement your measurements. You'll know where that, let's say, that gun is. And then you can flip that gun on how you think it's supposed to be. Think if a chair was tipped over. It would be really difficult. You'd have 10 different measurements trying to lock that chair in um, when it, it, this would get too busy. Another pro tip is use something like this where you're using the whole page. Don't just try to make a little tiny square with your sketch because it's going to get so filled up no one is going to be able to uh, figure out uh, where stuff is. It's just going to be too busy. Okay, so more than one person is best. Make sure you have a good key and date and time and room and who's doing the measuring, who's doing the sketching. Measure to the middle of the object. Uh, make sure that you have taken your pictures first because you may move some objects by a mistake by measuring. So we want to make sure we, we photograph and have everything locked in. Uh, and then you'll be ready to go. And if you need to bring this to court, then you could make your final sketch. This is a rough sketch. This is a rough sketch using triangulation. Peace.